want you to pray with us tonight uh, as the Lord shall speak to us from the word of the Lord. It is in the book of Acts. I think that's a good book for us. Amen. Amen. In that we are apostolic. Uh, our foundation is in the book of Acts. The church of God did not begin in Rome. Say something quick. It did not originate in England. Uh, it was not from the roots of Islam. It owes nothing to any other religion, Buddha or Huda. Can you say amen? Uh, but Jesus started this. And he said, up on this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is in the second chapter. Uh, beginning at the 40th verse and the 42nd inclusive. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Uh, and so ends the reading of the word of our Lord. Underscore in your mind and in your heart uh, that 42nd verse and uh, the first clause, and they continued steadfastly. And I want to talk tonight from the subject, Pentecost, to be continued. And I'd like to use for a reoccurring theme for this preachment, these words, look at your neighbor and shake their hand and say, ain't no stopping us now. Now give God a big praise in this building. We have before us an afterglow of one of the greatest, if not the greatest event in the history of civilization. It is not the invention of the wheel, nor the writing of the Magna Carta, nor the discovery, so-called discovery, uh, of America where Columbus discovered a place where folk were already staying. <laughs> That got past some of y'all. Uh, but how can you discover something when somebody's already there? But I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that the feeling of the Holy Ghost uh, of those 120 and the subsequent feeling of uh, the 3,005 and down to this very moment where we sit in this room filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues is without a doubt the most revolutionary act yes. in all of the history of the world. Yes, there are some things that happen and they are merely written down in history and soon they are forgotten because they have no significance. They have no sustaining power. They lose power after a while. And that's what they said about those that were filled with the Holy Ghost. They said, well, they'll, they'll come out of it. They'll get over it. <laughs> Lord, I feel that preaching tonight. They said, really, it's not real revolutionary life-changing power. Uh, but what, what it is is that they're drunk with new wine. And, and I don't know, some of y'all look so deep. Uh, that that you probably you say you never uh, drunk no wine, uh, but 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 some of y'all y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Know that wine will affect your mind. Can I get a witness here? I think I heard uh, the wise man say, "Wine is a marker. It'll make you think you can be the man that's bigger than you." Uh huh. But I'm here to tell you tonight. And my brothers and sisters, that they thought it was going to wear out. They thought that uh, they were going to get over it real quick. 
But I want you to know that when you get the real right brand of the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to get over it like yesterday. Well, I don't know what kind y'all got, but the kind that, that, that the Lord was giving out when I got saved, they had to take you home. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Uh, uh, you kept on bubbling. They tried to hush you up. And they tried to say, baby, baby, just, just, just calm yourself down. Said, 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 don't get so excited, but something kept on bubbling down in your soul. And you knew that you were really saved because the things you used to do. I ain't got no witness yet. Uh, you don't do no more. And so the Holy Ghost stays with you. Isn't that right? I have no uh, cultural aspersions to throw at anybody. I think that everybody's culture ought to be uplifted. But I, I want to say that there are certain kind of foods that don't stay with you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. A few minutes ago, I had me some catfish, collard greens, and rice. It's with me right now. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I feel my help right now. But sometime when you get some chow mein, y'all ain't going to talk to me. And lobster lo mein. And, 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 and God bless our good oriental brothers because I ain't got nothing against them. But the food tastes good, but just don't stay with it. Uh, another hour, you say, I wish I had me a piece of chicken. Y'all ain't going to talk through here. Well, the Holy Ghost will stay with you. And, and it won't go away the first time the devil come back to check. A young lady told me about in New York where I come from. They steal cars at the snap of a finger. If they can't get the car, they'll get the radio or they'll get something out of your car. And so people in New York have started putting signs in there with nothing, no radio, no CD, none of that. Ah, but one thief uh, uh, broke in and left a note and said, just checking. <laughs> That's what the devil will do. He know you say. He know you filled with the Holy Ghost. He know you speak in tongues. But he come back to see if you're going to stand up and leave the note saying. Don't preach that now. Hallelujah. I know you. You will steal a message in a minute. Can the church say amen? But when the devil comes back. The Holy Ghost got something for him. For the Bible says that you ought to resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible said, and they that gladly receive his word were baptized. There's a new kind of doctrine going around now that says baptism is not necessary. Uh, said, all you got to do is just lift that pinky finger up. And say Jesus is Lord and I believe God and say the sinner's prayer and you're saved. But I think I hear the Bible says somewhere in the book of St. Mark 16 chapter. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Jesus ran a midnight revival and while he was preaching. One of the distinguished rulers of the temple came in and said good master. I want you to know that no man can do what you did. Unless God be with him. Jesus shrugged off the flattery and said, Marvel not, I say unto thee, you must be born again. Nicodemus got biological on the Lord and said, How can I be born when I'm old? Shall I enter the second time into my mother's womb? Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it lifteth. You hear the sound thereof. You don't know where it's coming from and you don't know where it's going. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. So I submit to you that water baptism is necessary. It is not an option. It's not something that you can take or leave. Uh, the sermon that preceded this particular text uh, is one that Peter preached uh, when they asked him a question. Y'all ain't going to hear me. Never ask no Pentecostal a question about getting the Holy Ghost. You in for a good half hour anyhow. Can you say amen? Shake somebody's hand and say, I dare you to ask me. Hallelujah. Don't go asking me where he brought me from. Don't ask me how he picked me up and turned me around. 
and place my feet on solid ground. Uh -huh. But they want to know me and, and brother, but what shall we do to be saved? Peter had said unto them that same Jesus that you crucified. said, God has raised him up and made him both Lord and Christ. And so when they want to know how and uh, the methodology of salvation, Peter said unto them, repent. Y'all ain't going to talk here. I thought I was in the right church. I'm going to give y'all another chance. Peter said, repent. And be baptized every one of you. Not in the name of the Father. Not in the name Son. Not in the name Holy Ghost. Not in the name Yahweh. Not in the name Elohim, El Shaddai. Y'all ain't going to talk here tonight. Uh-huh, he said, but be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, I can circumvent that. But he picked it up a little later on and said, neither is there salvation in any other name but the name of Jesus. And before he could get the words out of his mouth, Paul tapped him on the shoulder and said, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Before that could cool down, somebody said, ah, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me tonight. Shake somebody's hand like to go shake it off and say, ain't no stopping us now. Lord, we're on a roll. The Lord has established the apostolic church. Come on, say amen. The apostolic church is not a denomination. The apostolic church is not just an organization with a president, vice president, treasurer, and sergeant of arms. But the apostolic church was born in the mind of God before there was a when or a where before morning stars sang together and the sons of god shouted for joy don't you think that you're just a last day up shot and people look at you and say yo y'all just started in 1906 baby we were started before israel was started amen israel started with the call of abraham aha uh -huh, y'all ain't gonna talk here tonight uh -huh. But the apostolic church was in the mind and the heart of God before the world began. And when Jesus stood yonder and declared the establishment of the church, amen, he was already settled in heaven. And so we find here that the Lord speaks to his church through his spokesman, Peter. Amen. Peter was not a pope. Y'all talking? Peter was not a man, any type of monsignor, a cardinal, but Peter indeed was a vessel used by God. Peter was apostolic because of the fact that he knew who Jesus was. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Well, somebody said, well, what about when he said that thing about thou art the Christ? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. When the Jesus said, whom the men say that I, the son of man, am. Amen. I feel it. Philip was probably sitting up there saying, well, he must be father because I'm going to ask him as soon as I get a chance, show us the father. And it will suffice us. Amen. Thomas was up there saying, well, ain't got no proofs. I don't know who he may be. Uh -huh. But Peter was in the back of the room waving his hands. I've been wrong a lot of times, but I think I got the right answer now. Amen. When he waved his hand, the Lord said, all right, Peter, go ahead and tell the class, uh, who do you think that I am? Peter, amen, stood right up, squared his shoulder, opened his mouth real wide and said, thou art the Christ. Y'all ain't going to help me. That word Christ means the anointed one. No doubt Peter was a, a student of, of, of Hebrew scripture, and he remembered Isaiah 61. That said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me. Y'all sit out a while. Y'all excite me. Hallelujah. I'm trying to build this thing a little bit here. Can you say amen? I'll be with you in a minute. Hallelujah. I'll be with you in a minute. Let me nail this nail down a little while. Amen. So when the Lord spoke through Peter, he said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. 
But you I got to understand that Peter was a Hebrew. Can you say amen? He was an Israelite. And the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, around about the sixth chapter, it said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And so when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God, he didn't mean that there was a father over on the left. Uh -huh, and there's a son over on the right. He knew anybody that claimed to be the son of God was God himself. Can I get a witness here today? 